Formed in 1982 in response to the Israeli invasion of Lebanon, Hezbollah, also known as the Party of God, a Lebanon-based Shia terrorist group, advocates Shia empowerment globally. Hezbollah emerged during Lebanon's 15-year-long civil war in the aftermath of Israel's invasion in 1982. Israel aimed to expel Palestinian militants operating in southern Lebanon. This move by Israel disenfranchised Shiites to take up arms in support of an Iranian-style clerical regime. The birth of Hezbollah started when the movement obtained critical financial support and training from Iran's Revolutionary Guards. Hezbollah issued its founding manifesto in 1985. The platform vowed Hezbollah's loyalty to Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Rudollah Khomeini, urged the establishment of an Islamic regime, and called for the expulsion of the United States, France, and Israel from Lebanese territory, as well as for the destruction of the Israeli state. <laughs> Hezbollah's top commander, the General Secretary, is chosen by a seven-member Shura Council, which in turn oversees five sub-councils. The Political Assembly, the Jihad Assembly, the Parliamentary Assembly, the Executive Assembly, and the Judicial Assembly. Hassan Nasrallah has led Hezbollah as General Secretary since 1992. Today, we have special guest Hassan Nasrallah. Hello, Hassan. Hello. I have been the leader of Hezbollah since Israel targeted and killed Abbas al Masawi, the group's past leader. Nasrallah was a member of El Dawi al Islamawi, a militant group that followed the teachings of Iraqi cleric Muhammad Bakir al Sadar. Now, not able to join us today due to other important terrorist activities are Nahim Qasim, the second in command, and Hussein al Khalil the top political advisor to Nasrallah. My very good friend, Imad Fayez Mignaya, was killed a few years ago in 2008 in a car bombing in Damascus. <sighs> he was considered Hezbollah's top planner of worldwide terrorist operations and was on several U.S. and international most wanted lists. Before we continue, I would like to give a special thanks to the Iranian government for giving us $200 million a year for our operations. Hezbollah's base is in Lebanon's Shiite-dominated areas, including parts of Beirut, southern Lebanon, and the Bekaa Valley, an important farming region in the east. Israel withdrew from Lebanon in 2000 after years of fighting Hezbollah guerrillas there. <coughs> Myself and the other Hezbollah terrorists continued to periodically shell Israeli forces in the disputed Sheba Farms border zone. This periodic conflict between us and the Israeli forces erupted in a month-long war during the summer of 2006 in which Hezbollah and I launched thousands of rockets into Israeli territory. How have you attacked your victims in the past? In 2013, I pledged my forces to the survival of Syria's Assad regime, one of our long-time allies. How many soldiers did you send to Syria? I sent 1,000, and we are training several thousand more for the Assad regime. What other kind of tactics do you use when in battle? We have used sophisticated anti-ship and anti-weaponry to deal with our enemies. So is it true that your group operates terrorist cells in Europe, Africa, Asia, and Latin America? No comment. But yes. Well then. Well, in 2010, U.S. President Obama described Hezbollah as the most technically capable terrorist group in the world. Iran also made comments saying your activity has made 
tempo that has not really been seen since the 90s. Many people have tried to pin us for several major terrorist operations in the past years, but we have denied many of them, although some of them we have carried out. Now, which of these acts have you and your group carried out? The 1983 suicide attacks on U.S. facilities in Beirut. The 1985 hijacking of TWA Flight 847. The 1992 car bombing of the Israeli embassy and the 1994 bombing of a Jewish community center in Argentina. The 1996 Kobar Towers bombing in Saudi Arabia. The 2005 assassination of Lebanese Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri. What about the 2012 bombing of bus carrying Israeli tourists in Bulgaria? In recent news, the U.S. says that Israel is planning to start a war in Lebanon against Hezbollah. In 2006, Israel and Hezbollah fought a month-long war that came to be known as the Second Lebanon War. The conflagration was ignited when Hezbollah gunmen sneaked across the Israeli border and attacked an IDF convoy, taking two soldiers captive. Israel retaliated by massive bombardment followed by a ground incursion into Lebanon, resulting in a four-week exchange of rocket and missile fire. According to Al-Akbar, the Israelis feel emboldened by the Saudi's government recent decision to cut aid to the Lebanese government and declare Hezbollah a terrorist organization. The newspaper also reported a German intelligence official visit visited with the Hezbollah leadership in southern Beirut neighborhood of Dahia, the group's stronghold, immediately following the killing of Samir Kuntar. Kuntar was killed in this past December by a rocket on a building in Damascus where it is believed he was working as a commander with Hezbollah. Kuntar was imprisoned by Israel after he and three others from the Palestine Liberation Front infiltrated Nahariya by sea in April 1979 and broke into the apartment of the Haran family where they kidnapped the father Danny and his four-year-old daughter Enat. They brought the pair back to the beach and killed them. Israel released Kuntar, a druse, in 2008 as part of a prisoner swap with Hezbollah, and he is believed to have joined the group since. Sources tell foreign policy that the group has developed a new level of military organization, the ability to capture and hold Israeli towns, accurate guided missiles, and equipment that could target Israelis' air force and navy. Yes, that's true. Hezbollah does believe it can bring any future war into Israel territory. Now, with more than a thousand fighters dying in Syria, how will a group like Hezbollah respond to this? Well, Hezbollah has gained a new level of tactical experience and weaponry that has made us a far more threatening force. So I hear Hezbollah's weapons have been upgraded. Now, is that true? Yes, it's very true. We have added tons of new weapons to our arsenal. We now have tactical ballistic missiles, Scud missiles, Fateh-110 Iranian missiles, and M600 missiles, which is a Syrian-modified version of the Fateh-110. You have recently spoken out about the organization's capability. Yes. <laughs> We have ways to strike Haifa's chemical plant and to kill thousands. We have sophisticated air defense systems and naval cruise missiles that could target the IAF and Israeli oil platforms. <laughs> well, that concludes all for today. So I'd like to thank you, Mr. Hazan Nasrallah from Hezbollah. Th thank you. Thanks. Now, if you don't mind, please remove your mask and show the world who you really are. I don't know if I really want to do that, but I guess if you ask me to, I will.